for today's lesson, we will be discussing about the trigonometric identities. So, before we proceed with trigonometric identities, we will also discuss first the two types of equation. We have the conditional and the identity equation. An identity is an equation that is true for all valid replacements of the variable. So, this means that whatever value we use for the given equation, it will be true always. So, that's why it's called identity because to begin with, the equations that we have on both sides of the equation are already equal. So, what are examples of identity equations? So, for example, we have x equals x. So, in this case, any value of x that you will use, you will get equal value for both sides. Another example is x squared minus 4 equals x minus 2 times x plus 2. So this is also an example of an identity equation because whatever value you will use for x, it will be always true or both sides of the equation will always be equal. Now if you notice, the right side, which is x minus 2 times x plus 2, is just the factored form of x squared minus 4. So that's the reason why, to begin with, these equations are already true, because they are just the same. But the only difference is that the right side is just a factored form of the expression on the left side. Another type of equation is what we call as the conditional equation. So it is a statement that is true on condition that the variable is replaced with the correct value. So from the name itself, it's conditional equation. That means there is only a specific value or a correct value for the variable that will make our equation true. So to identify that correct value, we must satisfy the given condition in the equation. So examples of conditional equations, so we have here x plus 4 equals 5. So there is only one value of x that will satisfy this given equation. So that will be 1. So 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. So there's no other value of x that will uh, satisfy this given equation. So that's the reason why it's called conditional equation. Because there's a certain condition that must be satisfied in order for us to identify the values. Unlike with identity, that it's always true for all the values of x. Same goes with x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0. So you can solve for the value of x using factoring. So there are again a correct values for the variable. Now since we're talking about identities, uh, this concept is also present with trigonometric identities. So again, when we say identity, um, any value that you substitute to the given variable will be true always on both sides. So that, that's the reason why I call it um, identities. So in trigonometry, we also have what we call as trigonometric identities. So this means these expressions are always equal with any value of theta that you will use. So there are different kinds of identities. So first is what we call as the reciprocal identities. So the reciprocal identities, so as you can see, uh, we can identify the different trigonometric functions by just getting the reciprocal of the other. So we have sine theta, so it's the reciprocal of cosecant, or it's 1 over cosecant theta. We have the cosine theta, it's the reciprocal of uh, secant. And then we have the tangent theta, which is just the reciprocal of cotangent. So same goes with the rest of the three functions. So again, we call this reciprocal identities because uh, we can get the other identities by getting the reciprocal of the other. We also have what we call as quotient identities. So when you say quotient, that means we are dividing the identities now or the functions. So to get tangent, uh, we divide sine theta and cosine theta. So again, the reason why it's called identities is because whatever theta that we use, it will always be true that the tangent theta is equal to the quotient of the sine theta and cosine theta. Another one is we have the cotangent theta. So for cotangent theta, it's just the cosine theta over the sine theta. And last is we have the Pythagorean identities. So Pythagorean identities, this came from the unit circle. And if you can still remember, in unit circle, we can create there a right triangle. We're in... We can solve for the values of the sine and cosine. So for example, this is the unit circle. Yeah, 
let's say that is the unit circle and then we can draw a right triangle and we can identify the trigonometric points here remember sine of theta is equal to y and cosine of theta is equal to x and remember in unit circle the radius is one so if this is x and y that means the x coordinate here is the cosine of theta and then the y coordinate is the sine of theta now the reason why it's called Pythagorean identity is because we apply the Pythagorean theorem in this illustration in order for us to get the identity. So the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So that's why we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Again, in order to identify these Pythagorean identities, we apply the Pythagorean theorem with our unit circle. We also have tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Remember also that sine squared theta is just the same as sine theta squared. Cosine squared theta is just the same as cosine theta squared. So this applies to all of our functions. So we will be using these identities in order to identify the different trigonometric functions of a certain theta. So let's say we have here if sine theta is equal to negative 3 fourths and cosine theta is greater than 0, find cosine theta. So what we have here is just the value of sine and then we have to identify the cosine. Now to solve this, you have to go back to the trigonometric identities and identify which of them is applicable in this particular example. Now to identify what trigonometric identity is applicable, you have to look at the given and also what is asked. Now, which among those trigonometric identities includes sine and cosine? So, we can use one of the Pythagorean identities, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So, this Pythagorean identity both includes sine and cosine. So, we can use this and... Uh, use this equation and substitute the given to us in order for us to find the cosine. So what we will do is, since this is sine theta, which is negative 3 fourths, we will substitute here. So we have negative 3 fourths and then we square it. Again, remember sine squared theta is just the same as sine theta squared. And then we have here cosine squared theta equals 1. And then simplify, so we have here 9 over 16 plus cosine squared theta equals 1. You move 9 over 16 on the other side, so you have cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus 9 over 16. Simplify this, we will have now 7 over 16. And then, in order for us to get the cosine, we'll get the square root of both sides. So therefore, we have cosine theta is equal to square root of 7 over 4. Now, to identify the sign that we have to use, you have to go back to the given. According to the given, cosine theta is greater than 0. So that means we have to consider the positive square root for our cosine. So therefore, our answer will be square root of 7 over 4. Now, if in case it was mentioned that cosine is less than 0, that means we will be considering the negative square root. Another one, if secant theta is equal to 5 over 2 and tangent theta is less than 0, use the identities to find the values of the remaining trigonometric functions of theta. So this time, what we have is secant and we have to solve for all of the remaining trigonometric functions. So sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, and cosecant. So you have to strategize what trigonometric identity are you going to use so what we have here is secant so it doesn't matter which one will you solve first as long as our answers are all the same at the end so what are the trigonometric identities that we can use so you can use uh, one of the reciprocal identities that involves the secant and that is the cosine theta is equal to 1 over secant theta we can also use the one of the Pythagorean identities. So tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So let's try to use one of the reciprocal identities. So we'll be using cosine theta is equal to 1 over secant theta. And this uh, identity 
it means we can get the value of cosine by getting the reciprocal of our secant. So, what we will do is, we have cosine theta equals 1 over 5 over 2. And then, get the reciprocal of this. So, cosine theta is equal to 2 over 5. So, we now have the first value of cosine, which is 2 over 5. Now that we have the secant and the cosine, we can identify again other uh, functions. So, we can use the one of the Pythagorean identities. So, tangent squared theta plus 1 equals uh, secant squared theta. So, let's use this in order for us to identify the tangent. So, we have tangent squared theta plus 1. Then, substitute the value of secant, which is 5 over 2, and then square it. So, we have here tangent squared theta plus 1 equals, then you square this 5 over 2. So, this is 25 over 4. And then you move one on the other side. So tangent squared theta is equal to 25 over 4 minus 1. So simplifying this, we have 21 over 4. And to get tangent, just get the square root of both sides. So we now have tangent theta is equal to square root of 21 over 2. Now to identify what sign of tangent should we use, we have to consider the given. So according to our given, it is stated here that tangent theta should be less than 0. Now, if the tangent of theta is less than 0, that means the sign should be negative. So, that's why, in this case, we will be considering now a negative square root. So, we will put here negative. So, the tangent now is negative square root of 21 over 2. Now that we have the value of cosine and we also have our tangent, so we can solve for the other function. So let's try to solve for sine. And to solve for sine, we can use the first Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. You can use other identities if you want, as long as you have the corresponding values needed. So in this one, we will be solving for sine. So sine squared theta plus, then our cosine squared theta is 2 over 5, then equal to 1. And then we square this. So you have sine squared theta plus 4 over 25 equals 1. And then you move this on the other side. So sine squared theta equals 1 minus 4 over 25. Or sine squared theta is now equal to 21 over 25. Now you get the square root of both sides, so we now have sine theta is equal to square root of 21 over 5. Now what value of sine should we use? Remember, our tangent is negative. The tangent of theta is negative. And tangent can be solved by dividing sine and cosine. Now, we already have the value of cosine, which is positive. Now, at the end, we should have a negative value for tangent. In order for us to get a negative, when we divide two numbers, one must be negative. So, that's why sine should be negative. So, we have to consider now the negative square root of sine. Because if you divide sine and cosine, so that's negative divided by positive, we will get a negative sign for our tangent, which will satisfy this given condition here. So again, the value of sign that we will use is negative. So negative square root of 21 over 5. Now in order for us to solve for the remaining trigonometric functions, all we have to do is just get the reciprocals. So what we still need to solve is the cosecant cosecant of theta. And as what we know, cosecant is just the reciprocal of our sine. So 1 over sine theta. So let's just get the reciprocal of sine. So we have negative 5 over square root of 21. And then let's rationalize this, multiply the numerator, the denominator by square root of 21. So we have negative 5 square root of 21 over 21. So this is now our uh, cosecant theta. And then lastly, for our cotangent theta, so it's just the reciprocal of our tangent theta. 
Our tangent is negative square root of 21 over 2. So, get the reciprocal. Negative 2 over square root of 21. Then again, rationalize. So, we now have negative 2 square root of 21 over 21 as our cotangent theta. So, we're able now to solve for the different trigonometric functions of the given theta using our trigonometric identities. So, that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the two types of equations, the conditional and identity, as well as our trigonometric identities. And see you next time.